hailing from the hills of cockpit country in the cockpit country town of Akompon. Unity is what essentially binds a movement and creates the solidarity behind any movement of a people, be it for a just cause, in defined in its purest and simplest way. I come to you this morning to essentially address a significant happening uh, within the last week. On Sunday, the Maroon Chiefs had a meeting to discuss the current state of affairs and the relations with the government and a lot of what you've been seeing thrown around in the media. We've sat back and we've observed what has become a solid attack on our legacy, on our heritage. And it all began with kinda, a word that means one family. It transitioned to out of many, we are one people. In that meeting as chiefs, the four elected Maroon colonels were on that call, Colonel Wallace Sterling, Colonel Douglas, Colonel Lloyd Latibadere, and myself, along with others of the indigenous community. Now, today, I say that we had a pretty thorough and engaging conversation in arriving at a direction and a path to quell all the nonsense that has been spun around and thrown around through the media. We're not here to divide anyone. We're not here to create problems. The Maroons have lived for over 300 years in these hills unprovoked. We have not been at war since signing off that treaty. We've main, we maintain brotherhood, we lived off the land, we continue to live off this land and protect the land. In recent times, we found ourselves in a conundrum where so many things have been promised to us as a people, roads, water, running water, you know. The cockpits provide 40% of the island's fresh water, we don't have running water. We've had promises upon promises upon promises that these things would come. And to date, we still struggle as a people. In that meeting on Sunday between all the colonels and other members of the indigenous community, Gamma G, Marcus Goff, who is a legal um, representative. And I find that it was a productive meeting, as I mentioned. Coming out of that meeting, we tabled the position that collectively we would prepare the maroon working papers which we would be passing to the government to begin dialogue to have a diplomatic resolution to this cause it was made clear in that meeting that a contact from the government had reached out to colonel sterling in an effort to arrange a meeting with the maroon chiefs only that the terms of this meeting would be that Chief Curry not be included. We raised the concerns, we had an open discussion about it, and everyone decided it was in the best interest of the collective and maintaining the position of one, one conversation having to do with the rights for indigenous peoples and the Maroons. What I'm saying is that having agreed to these terms within the last 24 hours, much to my disappointment, the decision of the other three colonels have changed. Colonel Latibadir was very strong in his opposition of having a conversation that would exclude any of the Maroon colonels. Why? because we're seeking to unify our voices behind the cause and we're trying to unify our own communities and bodies towards the common cause. We all want this to be a peaceful and diplomatic resolution 
I will not continue and join the nonsense that's being spurred in the media. We're not trying to create a divide. We're not creating a threat to the state. We're not here trying to overthrow anybody. The prime minister has his job and I have mine. The end of it all is that what we've been asking for is a sit down to have discussions around the rights of the people, the indigenous people of the land, the Afros and the Indians, everybody who is here, who is a representation of their heritage. We still aren't able to have a reasonable diplomatic conversation. Now, what would have caused my fellow colonels to change their position is still not clear to me. We had an emergency call last night at around 7 p.m. to discuss this matter 